This is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So the discussion today is interesting. There is a study that was published in 2018. The researchers are from Harvard and from the Brigham and Women Hospital, Boston. The study is about the use of carbohydrates or the presence of carbohydrate in diet and the percentage of the energy coming from carbohydrate and its association with the risk of mortality. Very interesting study. The basic summary of this is that they recommend, at least through this study, that 50% of the energy that we eat should be coming from carbohydrate and that is the lowest risk of mortality, this amount. When we go higher or lower, then the risk of mortality increases in a U-shaped pattern and we'll discuss that. That is a study. Now please remember that this is just some evidence, one, one study with this evidence. The general recommendations for restriction of carbohydrate diets, all healthcare professionals and students are aware of that. For example, in diabetes, one important step for management, the first step for management is to start restricting carbohydrate diet. And that recommendation will not change in, this light, in the light of this study because it is one piece of evidence yet. There is overwhelming data for restricting carbohydrates in various diseases for beneficial outcomes. Similarly, carbohydrates are restricted in some GIT diseases as well. So with this, let's look at this evidence. It is pretty interesting. So some references quickly. This is drbean.com. This is the study published in The Lancet in 2020, 2018. This is a response to this study that was printed in 2022. So let's look at all of these together. So the study is Dietary Carbohydrate Intake and Mortality, a prospective cohort study and meta-analysis. So the researchers say that low carbohydrate diets in favor of increased protein or fat intake or both are a popular weight loss strategy. Right. So we all know this thing <laughs> that when we are trying to maintain our weight, we reduce carbohydrates. In this study, what they did was they had 15,428 adults age 45 to 64 years, four U.S. communities were included who were participating in other studies. The studies had started in 1987 and 1989. The primary outcome was all-cause mortality. Median follow-up time was 25 years right so for some patients the median is half for some patients they followed them up for 25 years patients or persons and they looked at their dietary habits every six years and from there they also looked at the mortality in these cohorts and compared or analyzed the dietary carbohydrate levels and mortality. So let's look at it. What the researchers concluded was that if the energy that you receive, if 50% or near 50, 48 point something to up to 55, so about 50% of the energy, if that is received through the carbohydrates, then that is the best, um, the most reduced risk of mortality or is associated with the re reduced risk of mortality. Any lesser, for example, lesser than 40% or more, for example, more than 70% is associated with greater risk of mortality. In the study, what the researchers did was they excluded participants without complete dietary information or with extreme caloric intake and in that case, people who were taking two less calories, for example, lesser than 600 for men and lesser than 500 
kilocalories for women, or who were taking too many calories, for example, greater than 4,200 kilocalories for men and 3,600, greater than 3,600 kilocalories for women, such patients were or persons were excluded. Here is the chart that is the interesting one. It says over here, the thing that is behind my picture, overall P is less than 0 0.0001 and non-linearity P equals 0 0.0001. Now here, if you see, this is the scale for carbohydrates and this is the scale for hazard ratio for mortality. So if you see here somewhere in 50, that is the least hazard or one and if you take that as a reference, as the carbohydrate percentage in the diet reduces, and this is not the percentage of the volume of carbohydrate in the diet or the plate, it is the energy derived, percentage of energy derived from carbohydrates. So as that reduces, you see that the hazard ratio for mortality increases. Similarly, as that percentage increases, the hazard ratio for mortality increases as well. So there's a U-shaped chart here, and the 50% or moderate use of carbohydrate is associated with the least hazard or least risk of mortality. Now, an additional factor that they um, reviewed was that imagine if you were taking 70% of your energy is derived from carbohydrates in your food and you decided to start cutting the carbohydrates and you went down to 50%. Now the question is that 20% that you reduce from carbohydrate, are you going to replace it with something else? In some cases, patients, people don't. But if you replace it, let's say that you can replace it with the animal sources of micronutrients or plant-based sources. So the researchers actually looked at this as well and they saw that if the carbohydrate calories, calories derived from car carbohydrate, if these are replaced by the animal source calories, then the mortality increased again. So mortality increased when carbohydrates were exchanged for animal derived fat or protein and again has a ratio 1.18. So then they tried the plant-based diet as well or they looked at those people as well who were using or who were replacing their carbohydrate calories with plant-based diet, for example, nuts and, and dark breads or whole grain breads or peanut butters or chocolate, etc., mortality decreased when the substitution were plant-based. So 0 0.82, it went down, to, and then the ratio, confidence interval 0 0.78 to 0 0.87. So risk of mortality further reduced. So they write in their findings, during a median follow-up of 25 years, there were 6,283 deaths in ARIC cohort. So that is the atherosclerosis risk associated in community. And there were 40,181 deaths across all cohort of studies. So what they had done was, they did this study on these 15,000 people directly, but then they verified their results with the bigger cohorts as well. So that is why 40,181 deaths, I think a total cohort size was about 5 million. The median follow-up time was 25, 000, uh, 25 years. In the ARIC cohort, after multivariable adjustment, there was a U-shaped association between the percentage of energy consumed from carbohydrate, mean 48.9%, standard deviation 9.4, and mortality. A percentage of 50 to 55% energy from carbohydrate was associated with a lower risk of mortality in the meta-analysis of all cohorts, about 4, 432,179 participants, both low carbohydrate consumption, less than 40%, and high carbohydrate consumption, greater than 70%, conferred greater mortality risk than did moderate intake, which was consistent with a U-shaped association. 
pooled hazard ratio 1.20 for low carbohydrate that is in 20% increase in the risk of mortality and 1.23 for high carbohydrate um, consumption that is 23% increase with high carbohydrate. However, results varied by the source of macronutrients mortality increased when carbohydrates were exchanged for animal derived fat or protein 1.18 so 18 percent increase again and mortality decreased when the substitution were plant-based 0.82 so that is about 18 percent reduce reduction now the one of the commentary on this this is also published in the lancet and this was july 2022 they said re-evaluating low carbohydrate diets and mortality. So in this uh, a few paragraph long response, they say first in terms of relevance and accuracy, Siddleman and colleague did not investigate a low carbohydrate diet as a specific intervention. And to clarify here, what they did was they looked at other studies that were going on and the patients were using a questionnaire every six years to provide the feedback to what kind of foods they are eating. So this is why this sentence over here, they are saying Siddleman and colleagues did not investigate a low carbohydrate diet as a specific intervention, contrary to the general understanding and expectation of patients and healthcare providers. Instead, carbohydrate consumption was evaluated using data from the atherosclerosis risk in communities study a study that had this data which was not designed for this purpose so i agree and disagree with this because many times studies borrow data from other studies where this data may be present you see that nowadays a lot so it's not a big deal that the study data was taken but these uh, responders are actually correct in saying that this data was used from a study whose purpose was not to see lower or higher or moderate use of carbohydrate as a specific intervention. Of note, Siddleman and colleagues relied on semi-quantitative food frequency questionnaire that has that have been criticized for having error rates, high error rates. Data were collected twice per patient with a six-year interval. Furthermore, the benefits of therapeutic carbohydrate restriction were not discussed in the article. So I think this is a correct criticism to say that in this article, the benefits of restricting, for example, in diabetes and other diseases, restriction of the carbohydrates were important to discuss. At the same time, I feel that the, the study that I just discussed, they were showing an overall effect of various carbohydrate level, caloric uh, levels for caloric production, calorie production, and the mortality in those individuals. Strength of association is generally taken to be the most important criterion when considering causality in nutritional epidemiology. In the article, the hazard ratio for the lowest carbohydrate intake quintile compared with the moderate carbohydrate in intake was 1.2, which is very close to 50-50. So they're kind of saying that the lower and the moderate were close. In multivariable analysis, low carbohydrate diets in various forms have provided overwhelming benefit in treating obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndromes, which predict which predicts a reduction in all-cause mortality. So they're saying there are other studies that show that when the carbohydrate levels are reduced, the mortality risk reduction occurs. Whereas the article suggests an increase. So they're saying whereas this particular study that I just discussed with you, this study shows an increase or suggests an increase with lower use of carbohydrates. Then the, uh, the commentary continues, Siddleman and colleagues did not indicate what other factors are presumed to override such a reduction. So what they're saying is that we have seen from other studies that restricting carbohydrate to produce energy for us 
is beneficial and if this particular study shows that it is not then what are those variables what are those factors that are doing it and they are saying that those factors are not discussed so Siddleman and colleagues did not indicate what other factors are presumed to override such a reduction or include any numerical calculations to show the relative contribution of different factors in summary no low carbohydrate diet was tested in the ARIC study as such we believe that Siddleman and colleagues study conclusions if taken as basis for recommendation might be a risk in restricting patient choices inhibiting the future research and impeding the advancement of public health so uh, interesting response and an interesting study again this study is not to be used for recommendation this is an interesting study which which triggers an interesting question that is it really possible that we do need to have some levels of carbohydrates in our diet there are tons of other studies that show that restricting carbohydrates are beneficial there are also tons of studies that talk about carnivore diets versus plant-based diets some on this side or the other it's a it's a huge area of discussion debate and even controversy so i'm not getting into that i want to stay within the these two studies that i presented today and discussed what was there Thank you very much and I'll see you again. Bye for now.